Hello everyone, I'm Andrew Can, and if I can plan my content schedule, then you can too. This live stream is all about planning and really thinking of content, not only as videos, shorts, and streams, but what we can do on social media, what we can do elsewhere, really have a plan and stick to it. Now, I'm excited to be here live today. I see some familiar faces in the chat. I see Chantal, I see Dimmy, I see Doug, I see Garage Hobbyist. Thank you all so much for joining me here live today. Really excited to get started. Now, I asked a question in the poll, and if you're watching the replay, I'll make sure in the timestamps to skip right ahead to the action. But if you're live with me, I want to know, how often are you scheduling your content? Is it all the time? Are you in there day in, day out? Are you someone who sometimes schedules their content? I know, Chantel, that was, uh, that was what you were saying earlier. So let me know what you're doing. I'm curious to what everyone is up to, but the good thing about what we're going to be going over here today live is that everything I'm going to show you either has a free version or is completely free. And I wanted to make this as easy as possible because when it comes to scheduling content, one thing a lot of people forget is that YouTube is like anything is, yeah, you can go out and just create what you want to your heart's content. And that's great. That's fine. Millions of creators do it. However, I see constantly, whether it's in my community, whether it was when I was over at TubeBuddy or any other community, that a lot of times creators struggle with knowing what to create, when to create, why. So that's kind of what we're here to help with today. And what I'm going to show you works on every niche, every genre, and I'm super excited to just cover it because it's one of those things when you really understand it, how YouTube works, you can take these fundamentals and really thrive. So super excited to be going live here today. I see that we have Monique here. Monique says trying to get a month scheduled. We have trips scheduled almost each month. And again, that is a very common thing of why a schedule can be important. And one thing I'm going to say before we get into the schedule, again, giving just people a little bit of time to kind of trickle in, is that I always use this example. Houses are never built without a blueprint. And YouTube is the place for your audience. It's where you're building your connection, your community. So you want to have a blueprint for your house. You want to make sure that what we are doing is structured, scheduled, and of course, functional and fun. And that's the beauty of us planning our schedules. So I've been really excited. Garage Hobbyist says that they've been leaning on AI more and more also. If you look in the descriptions, you'll get a little bit of a foreshadow of what we're going to discuss. But I think we've given it enough time. Really excited to get started here. Now, where we're going to start, anyone can start here. It's going to be within your YouTube analytics. So whether you have content existing or you're just getting started, let's go ahead and take a look at YouTube analytics. So right off the bat, the first thing I want to focus on is going to be in our analytics tab. So if we click on analytics, we're going to click on this research tab in the top right hand corner here. So right here is research. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and that's where we're gonna get started. Because whether you are brand new or whether you are focused and have an existing community, we're gonna do some things that can help you understand what to create, what your audience might look for, and really understand a couple of things. Now, I used to work at TubeBuddy. Many of you may know that, but if you don't, TubeBuddy was a browser extension and still is that helps you grow and optimize your YouTube channel. However, since then, YouTube has come out with their own keyword research feature. They actually call it Search Insights if we go up here into the tab. So with you know the research tab here, I think it's very important whenever you, you may hear the word keyword research, and I, I have seen people get so tripped up in what does this mean and it's really quite simple. When you hear keyword research, it is what exactly it says. The key word that people who are on YouTube are interested in. And so when you hear keyword, that's what that video is about. It's the key word, the key focus. YouTube videos are conversations. People, you're starting it with making the video and they're replying by watching or engaging. So when you understand that the key word is that conversations that already exist or people are having, you can really shape your schedule around it. And another thing is if you do keyword research, you already know there's interest here. A lot of times people just create videos and then they're like, well, why is no one commenting? Why is no one watching? If you don't do that keyword research, 
you're not sure if people are interested in the topic you're creating. You could maybe be too early to a conversation or way too late. So it's really good to get some keyword research done to see. Now, I'm going to start with if you already have an established audience, you can go to a section called your viewer searches. Explore search terms relevant to your channel based on your viewers and viewers of channels like yours are looking for. YouTube is giving you this data, letting you know that these are things that your audience, the people watching your channel are looking for. And that is huge. Now, another thing I need to call out, use this tool to research some of the top searches from viewers on your channel and across YouTube. Keep in mind this part, because I see a lot of people get trapped and tricked here. In the last 28 days, when you are doing keyword research or you are scheduling your content, make sure to check the relevancy. It changes. For example, get ready with me in the summer if you're making this in the middle of fall may not be as relevant. So you got to keep that in mind too. I see some more familiar faces. Faces, faces, faces. Kalastic, I was thinking the elastic in the last part of your name. I see genealogy with Amy Johnson. Great to see you both here. And so when we are, you know, doing this keyword research, we understand that this is what our audience is searching for if we have the data and that there is kind of a shelf life of 28 days. So let's say we do all this research now and then three months later, we're here to implement Check if is it still relevant. I've seen terms have high search terms when I did them two months ago. And then when I make them, they're to medium to low. So you should always double check. Is it still relevant? Because like any conversation, again, keywords are conversations, you could be early or you could be too late. So we're going to start with what your viewers search for. Now, every audience is going to be different. If you are following along and you have this tab, tell me the top three that your viewers are searching for in chat. And if you're watching in replay, do the same thing. See if when you come back, if it changes. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. So a key thing to note for my channel specifically is that I focus on affordable filmmaking and making YouTube possible. So one of the things I talk about is affordability is how to make your room sound better. Now, I don't say soundproof a room. I actually say how to install acoustic foam. A lot of people miss make the kind of the it's not that it's impossible but they sometimes misconstrue acoustic treatment for soundproofing so you're going to see a lot of those here you also can see soundproofing a room but as we go through i can see that you know this could be a video i make on why acoustic foam won't why most acoustic foam won't soundproof a room or how not to soundproof a room could be fun and I could talk about a lot of people are going to tell you acoustic panels, the solution, and really what it's going to do is treat the room. Of course, there's a lot more caveats in that, but that's me thinking as a creator. This is conversations that people are having, whether with themselves or with communities. So how to get verified on YouTube? I actually made a YouTube short about this like two days ago, and it was how to get verified on YouTube. I'm verified without the 100,000 subscriber requirement. So this is something people always ask me. It's a conversation people want to know just because they're curious. And so when you start thinking of these as conversations, it becomes a lot different when you are thinking about this, right? Because you're not just making a video. You're starting a conversation. You're having a conversation. And you can start seeing this. You can see Adobe Express tutorial. I also am an Adobe Express ambassador in full disclosure. So... There are many, very many parts of my audience, Medium, which for me is still pretty good, looking for Adobe Express tutorials because that's content I've made on this channel. And as we continue going down, we're going to see acoustic panels, how to use your phone as a mic. And you may notice that there's this little ribbon here. This is how you can save. I've already saved some of these. These conversations, when I'm in there, I'm looking at weekly, monthly, because I want to make sure I'm on top of the conversations that my audience is having. I see that from Chantel says smaller channel only had one option, but it was there. And again, if you don't have the options, we're going to get into how you can create content. I see from Garage Hobbyist, Flex Core Welding, Harbor Freight Welder, Harbor Freight Sandblaster are my top three. And those are three different conversations for Garage Hobbyist. And I'm sure if you've already made videos, you can still go deeper. There's so much more. Like if I'm Garage Hobbyist, maybe it's the top five tools or top five things I recommend, again, looking at what your audience is looking for, from Harbor Harbor Freight. That's an easy one you could do. Or your favorite 
you know, welding things, things like that. You're going to know your audience better than I am. But again, as we're looking here, these are conversations. So we're starting to see acoustic foam, acoustic panels. I have three pages worth. So soundproof foam, acoustic panel installation. Even the low ones are still conversations. So these are things that either they're low right now or could change, like moving blankets, soundproofing. That makes sense. I have a very popular video about moving blankets on my channel. So these are all conversations your audience is still interested in. I can make multiple parts on a lot of these things. And that's the content we make. Now, when you find one you really want to do, we're going to click the Save tab. And you're going to see I have a whole Save tab here. And we're going to talk about that later. But let's say you don't have this existing data. Let's say you're a brand new, fresh, new to YouTube. You need to schedule. Keep in mind that all of the stuff we're doing here can live outside of YouTube, can be content for other social platforms, or they don't have to be a long form video, a traditional 16 by nine. They can be a YouTube short. So I want you to start thinking broader too. Maybe for me, I shouldn't dedicate a whole video on soundproof foam, but I can make a really quick short talking about how most acoustic foam is not going to soundproof. And that is going to, again, get the conversation going, keep it relevant to my audience. And again, we can have bigger conversations. Now, YouTube always recommends to start with an example. So they give Chromebook, again, Google is a little biased, they own Chromebooks, calculus, how to, right? So if there is something you want to make in your audience or in your in your videos, the first thing I would tell you to do is you're going to need to know what is your channel about. Another thing I see is that I'm a Minecraft channel. What should I do? That's too broad. If I type in Minecraft, maybe I'll get some ideas. In fact, let's go through this together. So these are things people are searching for. Minecraft general, Minecraft 100 days. Again, I'm not super versed. Minecraft house, Minecraft videos, music, Minecraft video. You're going to see high across the board because it is super competitive. So the general search term sometimes can be helpful, but sometimes it can lead to results like that. For my channel, if I was going to, let's say, YouTube, this would be a general term. So if people want to know about YouTube itself, YouTube shorts, you know, there's more specific free movies on YouTube. You know, there's going to be a lot of different results for each term. But if I make it a little more broad, right, YouTube lighting, all of a sudden, we're going to have different results. Now, one thing I want to mention is that YouTube itself, for its own keyword research feature, gives high, medium, and low. Again, when you think of them like this, if it's high, try to make that video within those 28-day cycles if you can, if we're scheduling this further because we're talking about that. Just check again. Keep in mind that conversations and keyword research and content are all fluid. They will ebb and flow as we go on. So even though YouTube lighting is medium now, I'm more likely to make a video if it's medium to high than if it's low. I might just save the low video for another day or think about it later, look at it a little later. But for me, lighting for YouTube videos, I could make a video about that. Lighting setup for YouTube videos, they're very similar. So lighting for YouTube videos, I could talk about the basics or lighting setup, I could talk about my exact setup. So two different videos I can make. Cheap lighting for YouTube videos, maybe after I make these first two, I can talk about, hey, you know, lighting doesn't have to be expensive. It can be affordable. So again, you can see that these are conversations, things that people are interested in talking about. So I can shift the content to that. Want to go ahead and pay attention to the chat. It's important to keep in mind your viewer searches are based on your current viewers. I use the searches across YouTube tag to find other topics to cover and grow the audience. Absolutely. It is important, though, when you're thinking about both is you should focus on both because you do want to keep your current viewers interested. And if you are going to make content for what your viewers are searching for, that's where that high comes in handy. Because every time, even within this tab, it's still all of this research is from viewers on your channel and across YouTube. So if it's low, that might just be more so it's your focus viewers. But if it's high, it's a lot broader. And again, YouTube is building this tool out. It's going to be fun to see what this tool looks like 10 years from now. Uh, I say that because I've been on YouTube now since 2008. I've seen a lot of change on this platform. I've seen YouTube saying we're never going to give click-through rate data to now it's the tried and true standard. So 
always look at change, always be embracing of it, and you'll never know. I see from iPods Cat, mine are games, Fortnite, Fall Guys, and Minecraft. Again, as you are going to be looking and doing research, you could find more information for your unique niche, right? So if we type in Fortnite, we're going to see video game search term. You're going to see a bunch of different things that even here, these are all topics or video games that you could look and kind of decide from. If I go back to, you know, YouTube, it's also going to recommend things I could talk about. Now, a lot of these, it's going to be a little biased. So if I go maybe film or filmmaking, right? I can see guerrilla filmmaking, advanced documentary filmmaking. I can see different things that we could talk about. And so by looking at what people are interested in, we can have those conversations. Now, once you have a topic, you're like, this is what I'm going to make a video on. So I'm going to show you some of my saved. I have multiple pages. Some of them I might make now. Some of them I might make later. But, you know, I think one of the things I want to focus on is why don't I talk about Sony cameras? I'm going to focus all about Sony cameras in my scheduling, in my content planning, because I have recently made a switch to Sony cameras. It's something I'm super passionate about. And it goes back to my core audience of affordable filmmaking. So when we think about Sony cameras, this is where we can go deeper in the research. We can really start having fun. Now, I mentioned a bit earlier that we're going to be, you know, using different free tools. The first free tool we are going to be focusing on is actually Google's own Bard. It is an experiment you do have to get access to. You know what? I'm going to go with ChatGPT because anyone can focus on it. Now, I'm going to disclose. Just because I'm using ChatGPT and AI, there's a couple of things I want to disclose. Like any tool, it is only as good as you know how to use it. I am completely all right at looking for content ideas, but maybe not so much scripts. And this is me personally. You can have your own opinions, and I'd love to hear yours, whether you're watching the replay or live in chat. But for now, I'm mostly using it for research ideas, not so much for script writing or things. There's a lot you can do with it. But for me, right now, I'm just focusing on video topic ideas. So with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and show ChatGPT. And we're going to go ahead and have a little bit of fun, right? So when you are in any AI, there's something called prompting. And if you don't know what that is, it is exactly as it sounds. You are prompting the AI to give you responses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in, come up with 10 beginner friendly YouTube titles for Sony cameras. And what ChatGPT is going to do is it's going to give me 10 ideas. And the beauty of us being the creators and using a tool is I can decide, are there any ideas here I want to use? Yes or no. If there's yes, then great. I can work on it. If not, we work it again. So right here, we have Sony Camera Basics, a beginner's guide to getting started. Mastering your Sony camera, central tips for beginners. Exploring Sony camera modes, a step-by-step -step tutorial. All of a sudden, I went from just knowing I want to do a video on Sony to having 10 options I could make. And again, as you are getting better, as you are, all this is his idea. For me, when I was looking at Sony cameras, I know as a creator, I could say, let's reprompt and say, let's focus a bit more on are Sony cameras good for YouTube? Again, I know my audience is YouTube. They're looking for a little more focus. So, so here is something it says, certainly. Sony cameras are highly regarded for YouTube content creation due to their advanced features, excellent image quality and versatility. Here are 10 YouTube videos titling on focus, why Sony cameras are excellent. So right here, if I'm focusing on YouTube creators and trying to get them to maybe switch from their phones, that's something I can do. I should say, when should you leave your phone to upgrade to a Sony camera? That's me as a creator thinking. So these are all different ideas. And I it's right here. It even says these high, these Video titles highlight the advantage of using Sony cameras for YouTube, including image quality, and it all includes things. So these are things I should say. Right here would be maybe an interesting one. Top five reasons you should choose Sony cameras for your YouTube channel. 
So this could be a beginner who's looking to upgrade their camera quality and wants to know, should I go to Sony, right? And as we look here, right, we had someone who was talking about Fortnite, someone, you know, for Garage Hobbyist, he was giving us the three things people are looking for. You can prompt it to be more focused around YouTube. And some of these are just titles, right? For me, if I were to look at this, right, Sony cameras, elevate your YouTube videos with superior image quality. I don't think this would do too well, but this one, top five reasons you should choose Sony cameras for your YouTube channel, it's not bad. It's actually one of those things that I could even go further. I'd maybe get rid of top and maybe go five reasons you should choose Sony, Sony cameras for your YouTube channel. That right there is one I could see myself making. And so I'll go ahead and copy it because I think out of here, I'm going to look Sony camera lenses selection for YouTube, Sony cameras you didn't know about for YouTube success. This one's a little bit of a stretch. And again, you kind of have to know the content you could make for it. I don't think this one I can make really 4k video recording with Sony cameras, deliver stunning content on YouTube and eh, maybe Sony camera stabilization, smooth and professional YouTube footage. I could work this one a little bit, but not bad. Low light shooting with Sony cameras enhance your YouTube videos. That is one of the cool things about this. And again, you're going to know your content, right? So once you have a topic you want, there are so many different ways that you can save this in your wheelhouse, in your, in your database for content later. So again, we went from a keyword, which was Sony cameras, which is something my audience, it was looking for and is something I could talk about because it's something I've recently switched to. I have perspective on it. So it matches my own interests with the interest of my audience to deliver good content. Now, again, I focus on affordable filmmaking. I focus on how to make YouTube's affordable and fun. So that really fits all of those things, especially when I look at the Sony camera from the perspective of using it for YouTube. You've got to know who you're talking to. So with that, we're gonna go and open Notion. Now, I love Notion. You don't need Notion. You can use Google Sheets. You could use Word documents, whatever you can use to make this easy for you. So I have my Notion tab open. And what I'm gonna do is you are gonna see there's three ways that I focus anything. I have the content name. I have the type of content. I have the status of it. I have the publication date. I have who I assign it to. If I ever grow up my team, I could maybe assign it to someone else. I have the link, so I could put helpful links. And then I have media, helpful media. So I'm going to go ahead, and instead of video, we're going to call this top five reasons, and I'm going to get rid of that top. I'm going to call it five reasons. You should choose Sony cameras for your YouTube channel. Now, right now, this is just an idea. So I'm saving this for later. But let's say that, you know, looking at my current schedule, so I do have publications, right? So I have, you know, how to schedule with Adobe Express. That was a video I was going to make on the third. Obviously, I changed it and pivoted. So what I can do is I can pivot this a little later and I can change this. But the beauty of all of this is, whoops, already have one for that date. So again, you got to know your schedule. I can put it on the 13th, I think. Yes, I can. Nothing there. So again, you will know your schedule. You can plan it. But if I want to include this, I know when I post and I try to post weekly. So five reasons you should choose Sony cameras. I might make that, you know, again, keep in mind that that Sony cameras one I found in February and it's still relevant. I might try to go a little bit early. I might go August 5th. That looks like a good date for me. Actually, no, it's not because I have a post on the 6th. So maybe we go August 8th, August 19th. We'll put that there. So this works with my existing schedule. It's a piece of content I could make. And I went from idea to execution. I see that Chantel Hills used ClickUp. There's ClickUp, there's Google Sheets, there's Microsoft Office. There's so many of these things, but really just focus on the tabs you can make for yourself. I like Notion because I just like some of its features. It also has AI. If a lot of people don't know this, but it is a paid feature. So if you're wanting to like use a lot of things, this is something I recommend. I also like you know, I have my launch calendar. So if I want to look at ideas, I could have looked at the calendar view. If I want to look in by status, it's again, a lot of this you can do completely for free. I customize it a lot, you'll notice. And so this for me is what I like. But if you want to look what types I have, I have community posts, I have 
video, live stream, vertical video, sponsored posts, tweet, LinkedIn posts, Instagram, blog posts. So you can really kind of, you know, take all these ideas and change them. And while we are here, you know, talking about different ideas, this is where I can come to and be like, okay, I want to post content. What do I have in my ideas? I have a whole section that if I click into it, it's all about video ideas, right? Like understanding the basics of cinematography, color grading and correction techniques. These are all things that I've looked up before and could definitely create content on, right? And I and I prompted, in this case, Notion. So if I click the ask AI to write, so I could say, come up with 10 ideas on YouTube thumbnails for Twitter, right? Now, this is something I could do here. So these are, you know, these are from Notion. Now, Notion's AI, I believe, is using ChatGPT. I could be wrong on that. If I am, someone please correct me out there. But I believe it's uh, using that, or they may have come up with their own. So these are like thumbnail ideas, but it's 10 here are 10 YouTube thumbnail ideas for Twitter. So use an image of yourself to create a personal connection with the viewers. This is maybe something I could do. I could use these ideas as something else. Use a bright eye catching background to draw attention. Use bold, large fonts to make your text stand out. So all of these are just ideas. I think this is actually something I could make a Twitter post about. So I will talk about, you know, use bold, large fonts to make your text stand out. I'm going to change. Well, first, I'm going to close this so this is a little larger. But I can change this to be a tweet. I can just say that this is an idea. And then, you know, because it's a tweet, I might put this out on Let's put it out on Monday. So with that, all of a sudden, I have a piece of content that I can work on. That's an idea. It's for a tweet. So if I'm ever like, what should I do? What should I post? So I see from TED Talks Tech, is this your video ideation engine? Can you share a template of this, please? I see TED Talks Tech says, yes, Notion uses GP chat GPT. So a lot of my ideation doesn't come just from Notion. As I say, I use multiple things. So we are using ChatGPT, but most of it comes from the research I do on YouTube. And again, I cannot stress this enough. When I do the research on YouTube, that is laying out where I wanna put the house, what the conversations are. We're gonna circle back all the way to the beginning. You look up whether you're doing searches across YouTube or what your viewers search for, that is the video that you can make. It's up to us as creators to understand how to build that out farther. So all of a sudden, we had we started with our searches. We started with Sony cameras, but from Sony cameras, we changed to a bunch of other things, right? So we made we scheduled out a video for 819, five reasons you should choose Sony cameras, because once we had the idea that people search for on YouTube, we we put it into chat GPT got some ideas, and that was just for video ideas. We're trying to build a schedule that's for all social media. And again, all of the things we got from what our viewers are searching for on YouTube, we can use on Twitter. Because guess what? YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. What we gather from here, we can use elsewhere. And that's amazing, because that means that there's so much interest here. And YouTube and Google are telling us, another thing we could do if, if you want to use something else is Google Trends you can see a little bit differently, right? So if I type in, we're gonna keep it to Sony cameras, right? We're gonna search the trends. One thing I will tell you to do is, in instead of going web search, go to YouTube search. This is a tab not a lot of people know about. If you look here, it'll give you a little bit more of the seasonality. You can choose the past 90 days. You can really have fun with Google Trends, especially when you're looking in YouTube search. If you have two ideas and you're not sure which one you want to put out first, we can compare Sony cameras, right, to what is another one we have saved that we decided to make, right? Maybe it could be compared to how to stream on YouTube. We could decide here how to stream on YouTube. We're now comparing them. And looking here, how to stream definitely has a little bit more. Now, it's going to go with you know, the US is where I'm based, but you can make this worldwide. And as we can see, as how to stream on YouTube has a little bit more interest over time, 
But there are ways I could tie these two things together. Maybe I first talk about how to stream on YouTube, but guess what? If you want to get quality like mine, I use a Sony camera to get quality like this, right? I'm actually using a Panasonic G7. That would not be accurate, but I could stream with that one. I just I already have my setup and this camera I'm not using out anymore except for streaming. But the point is, me as a creator knows how I create and why. So I could definitely, from one idea, and another thing that people have interest, come up with multiple different ideas, right? So how to stream on YouTube is one I want to focus on, right? Have I? How do I have it here? No, I don't. So again, we're going to take from what our viewers told us they were interested in, which is how to stream on YouTube. Another thing I could talk about is StreamYard. That's what I use. That's what I'm using now. So again, I'm coming up with so many ideas. I don't know why I didn't. Okay, I guess I didn't copy and paste correctly. Got to love when that happens. So we go from how to, why is that video still there? How to live stream on YouTube. It's just not working the way I want it to. That is the conversation. This would be a video. This is again an idea. And because this is something, you know, I'm looking here, if I'm looking by calendar, I might just put it for June 1st. Sometimes what I'll do is I just need a date so that I can see. I don't know why we're stuck in March for this one, but we'll go to June. So I have had a live stream on YouTube. My schedule is looking here, but you know what I don't have a video for? I could maybe post a video this week because I have one for the the 1st of July, but maybe the 27th, I make a video about how to live stream on YouTube, right? And the thing I like about Notion is I have it set up where I did the research. I can really, you know, if I have a script version, I can, if I want a shot list, I can really build this out. So I've already done a lot of this work already just to kind of, you know, focus on myself. So I know that the research was done. I can put done using YouTube keyword research and again this is us building out our content schedule our planner and this is all on content now when we take it a step further if we want to have conversations which all of these are you can then go back here and use these that you know you can use these conversations to figure out how interested the people who are already watching are right so how to make money online, right? Maybe I shift this a little bit more to how to make money on YouTube. I could also, you know, research that. How to make money on YouTube. Online might be a little too broad, but here we are. How to make money on YouTube is a little more of a better fit for my audience, but it's good to know that online is also search. So if I'm talking about maybe on Twitter, here's how I make money online using YouTube, right? We're, we're coming up with us as the creator thinking about these things. So from here, we can actually create a community post. And we're going to schedule this post. We're going to click create a post. We're going to go for it. I'm going to say, hey, all. That's how I usually start. Would you be interested in learning how to, you know, learning how to make money on YouTube? If so answer the poll down below. You can be a little better, but for this example, I figure this is perfect enough. You know, we can go text poll, yes, no, sometimes for Chantel. No. <laughs> we can say, I haven't thought of it, thought about it. You know, I try to give three options. I find that you can give more, but I feel like, yes, I'd like to, mm, not really. And then what we do is we can schedule. We're going to schedule this, right? So I'm going to go back to my calendar. When do I have a free date? When am I not posting anything? So maybe I'm posting this on Twitter. So this is also something I could do to post here, but I think I'll post on the 10th. So, you know, what I'm seeing here is we're going to post on the 10th. Another thing I would recommend is if you have access to it in your analytics, is there something called the best time to publish on YouTube? 
uh, what we can do, TubeBuddy has a quick helpful link to it. So if we go to, you know, extension tools and click on best time to publish, it is just in your analytics. So it's actually under audience. But, you know, for Sunday, the best time to publish for me would actually be closer to 8 a.m. But because I want a lot of people to see this content, I'm actually going to post it probably at like 6.45 because it'll feed into that feed. Hopefully that makes sense of why I'm posting it then. So 6.45 a.m. for June 10th scheduled. And like that, we have our first scheduled post that we can start creating. And again, we've gone from idea to execution. And that's what I really want to focus on. And we can do this not only on you know, YouTube, we can do this on Twitter. One of the apps I like to use is Adobe Express. Again, I mentioned a little bit earlier, I am an ambassador. It is something that I talk about a lot, but you can do it through Adobe Express. You can make graphics using some existing templates to really elevate some of that stuff, right? So when it comes to all of how we got the idea, how we're in the execution phase, it really started in this research tab. We took it, you know, we started searching and we went further, right? So one of the ones we got for Garage Hobbyist earlier was, you know, Harbor Freight, right? And one of the ones I thought was pretty interesting was Harbor Freight Welder, right? So if we look here, Harbor Freight Welder, it's got high search volume. All of these different things our conversations. Now, some of them are better than others. If you wanted to make a conversation or have one, if I am, you know, garage hobbyist, I'm going to look here and say, okay, which of these one as the creator, we are in control. What I want to make a video about a lot of times other people, and this is something I can't stress enough either. You get to choose what videos you make just because there's interest doesn't mean you have to make it. It's just letting you know. You don't have to always make it a long form video. Maybe it's just a quick short. Maybe you just got a new welder and you're excited to show it off. Again, as you can't tell, this is not my expertise, but hopefully this makes sense. That could be a short. And if he, people start asking comments or like, oh, I'd love to see a video, you're using that as a quick way to decide, right? And we can grow off of that. So I could maybe say, okay, you know, people are looking, it's kind of low though, but Harbor Freight Welder reviews, okay. Harbor Freight Welder, maybe best Harbor Freight Welders for beginners. I don't actually know if that makes sense. But, you know, we can go back to the root, right? We can get rid of Welder. What, what are people wanting to know around Harbor Freight? Things like tools, Welders High, tr Freight Trailer, Sand Blaster, all these different things. Harbor Freight Tools is medium. You can say best Harbor Freight Tools for beginners. Again, gives you a little bit more. You can really have some fun with this. And Ted Talks Tech says, appreciate where you talk about the idea stage begins. Of course. So again, we have gone from quite a big round of different ideas. And so we started here. We've asked for some more help. You know, for Harbor Freight, you know, here's what we could do. We can go into here and say, come up with 10 YouTube video ideas around Harbor Freight. Right here, 10 must have Harbor Freight tools for every DIYer, Harbor Freight versus name brand tool, comparison test, which is actually kind of crazy because right here, use them for comparisons, alternatives as well. That was one of the ones ChatGPT also realized that could be an opportunity, an option. So for Garage Hobbyists, you're right on the pulse of what I would do too. Again, ChatGPT, I'm using it for ideation, not so much complete creation. It's not going to make this video for me yet. But for right, <laughs> right now, that's where I'm using it as. I'm using it more, I guess, as an assistant than completely letting it do everything. I'm still doing the research. I'm still creating. I'm the creator. And while we're using these tools, it's important to remember that they are here to assist you. And so, you know, if there's one that is interesting to you, Garage Hobbyist, from this list, that's when you can create it. And you said earlier using ChatGPT, or actually, I think you said AI to be more specific. So that's just one of the ways you can do it. Another thing I would keep in mind is, you know, if you're looking at some of these ideas, save them. If even one of them, you think you could have a conversation on Twitter or LinkedIn or some other thing, right? Like maybe hidden gems at Harbor Freight. 
maybe this is a question you ask your audience, right? You come here and it's like, hey, are there any hidden gems in Harbor Freight I'm unaware of? That's a huge way to get your audience involved because there's going to be someone out there that knows a tool that you don't know and they're going to be thrilled about it. And then maybe that gets your ideas sparking and it's involving your community and you go, hey, I wanted to go ahead and thank Garage Hobbyist for this hidden, hidden gem Harbor Freight tool. And they feel more invested. And then I said, you see, my TikTok that took off was an alternative to Harbor Freight tools. I'd also make a YouTube video on it and maybe make multiple. Ask questions in your community tab. Again, build, build places where you can do it. So, you know, we have one scheduled. I'm going to keep scheduling because, you know, one of them is how to stream on, you know, YouTube, right? So I could easily create a post. I see people are wanting to know how to live stream on YouTube. I use StreamYard, but what are you using to live stream with? So this is where if we have an image, we could just, you know, Google questions. And then, you know, we could just pull an image from Google. I always recommend, you know, if you're going to pull from Google, there's actually tools here. Usage right, you know, Creative Commons licenses, which means you can use them. So this is like either they are good to be used. Usually, again, look deeper. Always go to the website. Make sure there are, it is, you know, available. Some of these, if you look here, licensable. I use websites like Pixlr. So that's one that I've used. So there's like a bunch of other stuff that you can use. Again, if you use Adobe Express, not the only thing you can use, but it'll give you an idea of things you can use. You can make something really quick in there. So really whatever you're you know familiar with using for the licensing, you can make a quick you know thing here. So really use what you have available to you. That's what I always tell people. So I need to sign into Adobe Express. But while I'm doing this, you know, use what you have. And I always like images because I feel like when people are on YouTube, it gets them to stop and be like, oh. So that's what I found to be true anyway. Of course, use what works best for you. As I'm waiting for that to go, you know, I see people are wanting to know. I could also just quickly pivot this if maybe. I want another text poll, right? Or I could even make an image poll, right? I could then maybe, if I know some of the popular, I know I said StreamYard, right? I could just look for the logo. So maybe I go to StreamYard and then, you know, from here, we go to where we see the pictures, right? And then we can look up other alternatives, right? You can also just use Google searches to kind of come up with different ideas, right? So we click on images. I could, you know, copy the image, or if I already have the image, I could go ahead and add it to the poll, which I do have the StreamYard logo somewhere. <laughs> but trying to find it right now live might not be the most fun thing to watch, so I'm trying to keep that. So that's another option you have, is to just go ahead. I think it used to allow you to drag. I could be very wrong. Come on, am I right? Do you still allow it? Nope. Okay. Well, it was worth a shot. But, you know, I don't have to do that one. I could also, you know, if I click delete and delete, it'll take me back. I could do this. I could do StreamYard. I could do OBS. I could also look up. I know there's Restream.io. Um, trying to think. YouTube Direct is an option they could use. I always say for this, you could say other will comment. This is, again, giving you that ability to have this. Then what you can do is when we go back to Notion, we're going to see, you know, when can we post this? We learned that the 10th is open. So for us, the 15th of June is open. So because the 15th of June is wide open, we're going to go ahead and click 15th. We're going to use what we learned, and we're probably going to go at like 645 again. But again, we can always check with going back to audience. So. We're posting on a, when is the 15th? It's helpful to know. The 15th is a Thursday. So for us, 
and this is what I do, and you'll you'll know your your stuff by then. So yeah, it seems like that's still pretty good time for us. And now we have two things scheduled. And again, we are going deeper. We came from, you know, the research tab. We learned what people are searching for, and we've got deeper. I see what can I you what can I as a YouTube creator get from Harbor Freight Tools? That is actually a really good question that TED Talks Tech is wondering. Are there tools that I could use to upgrade my studio? For me, this would be interesting. And again, keep in mind, you're trying to reach a broader audience than me, Garage. So <laughs> hopefully you don't, you know, but one thing I always want to know is like, anytime I'm trying to redo my studio, it's like, what tools should I get? And that's usually what I quickly Google, like what tools are, you know, good. Another thing you could do is like, is the Walt worth the hype? Or like, is this worth name brand worth it? Because that is something that I've wanted to know. Because there's like the big three. I've, I've, you ask anyone, they are so opinionated. But guess what? There's always a big three on anything. When it came to keyword research tools, people were like, should I use TubeBuddy? Should I use VidIQ? Should I use Google Trends? The answer is going to be use what works best for you, honestly. But it is fun to have those conversations and you put a little bit of your own personality in by answering it. Obviously, I'm using Google's own research feature because I'm too biased. I worked at TubeBuddy. I don't think I could give a fair answer to that question. But, you know, we can all each give different results. Right here, material handing, handling section looks very useful. I see, dang it, I'm going to have to catch the replay to see what I missed. So just to kind of level set and give a reset because I see we've gotten more people in here. What we have talked about thus far is the keyword research tab here and how you can look at it for search terms. If you have enough audience data, I said we should look at what your viewers are searching for. Here we found that my audience was different than some others there. I see how to use a phone as a mic for PC and how to use your phone as a microphone has what is called a content gap. When YouTube says, a content gap is a way of measuring what viewers are searching for and results they find. A content gap happens when viewers can't find any results for their searches can't find an exact match, or viewers can't find relevant videos or their searches, for example, the content is old or low quality. So how to use your phone as a mic is actually a short I made because there was a section where I said, if you don't have anything else, you'd be surprised how good your smartphone is for creating YouTube videos or just microphones and voiceovers. So that's something else I could do too. And that is maybe I wanna, I already made a short, maybe that's when I do a dedicated video. Or let's go back and think, you know, what can we do in the content tab? What can we do in our notion, right? So if we go back to all projects, I'm going to go ahead and I don't know why. Actually, maybe I got to do that. Yep. It was copying it as a link, not so much as the direct text. I'm sure someone recognized that before me. I believe it was just as a mic. It might have been as a microphone. Yep, how to use your phone as a mic. Again, microphones is going to be the pretty similar idea. So this is another idea that I can flesh out, right? Came from the YouTube research tab. Old show how good some phone microphones are for recording VO slash video and use an old phone. I actually, when we didn't have a dedicated microphone, and this this is not something I'd recommend. It, it is really dependent, but we we used a phone to boom. And it, again, I don't always recommend doing this, but what we did was we boomed the phone using a cell phone holder on a paint roller, which again, not a boom pole, but could be a video I make because it was actually it actually worked pretty well. We hold the we held the phone like just slightly out of frame and i we were genuinely surprised how good it was obviously it's probably better if you have the phone here but if you can't get a mic this close but are recording and hiding it with your face all of a sudden you have really good direct audio just from a recording app and you'd be surprised so it goes from you know just thinking outside the box and so those are ways that you can creatively use what you have and that's content i could make right so goals, how to use them, how show how good some phone microphones are for recording video slash video. You can use an old phone in multiple ways. Sometimes those cameras give you different options. You know, this is something that I would be very passionate to make a video about. And guess what? There's interest in it too. And so 
even if you switch, going back to the Sony cameras example, as we talked about earlier, this is where as creators, we can be fun. We can have so much. And as I'm building out the schedule, I want to know if you're watching now, go back with me to your research tab. If you're looking for help or want some ideas, tell me what your viewers are searching for or a video you want to make. And we're going to do it together. That's going to be one of those things I want to talk about. I'm having a lot of fun here live with all of you. And thank you for spending the most precious resource we all have your time with me. Right here. Well, VidIQ obviously <laughs> talking about when I was talking about their favorites. LOL, but you were right. It depends on your flow. Exactly. And I see from Angelique. Thank you for the recap, Angelique. Great to see you here. Great content if you're not following her. And topics gain and lose popularity. So we are remaking old videos because it's getting a significant of you suddenly. Exactly. Which goes back to a point I made earlier. When we're having these conversations, anytime you're pulling these data, it's in the last 28 days. So if you're scheduling this content like I did for Sony cameras, you know, five reasons you should choose Sony cameras. I'm scheduling this for August. I, I need to make a reminder to myself, which I'll do in Notion. In fact, I'll do it right now so you guys can uh, see it. So right here. Found from YouTube. Check if still high in August. If I can spell this, it would be even better. But yes, that is absolutely an important thing you should be doing is checking. Necessity is the mother of invention, especially when you're a content creator on a budget. 1,000%. I too used an LG G8X when I need to record a safety track. Hey, use what you got available for you. You'd be surprised. And man, I miss LG and phones. One of my favorite phones I ever had was an LG G4. And love that you're live. Of course, I'm trying to be a little more, If you actually, you can see, I, I try to be as transparent as possible. So you can see that I'm planning some you know, live streams. I want to do a charity stream. It's something I used to do. Haven't really done one this year, but I want to find a good charity that I believe in just to do like content, do channel reviews for charity. It's one of my favorite things I've done. You know, I've raised over a thousand dollars for charity. So it's one of those things that, you know, I can find, you know, something I'm sure, but I just need to, need to find a charity I'm excited about and one uh, cause I believe in too. Not saying that I don't have any I believe in, but I have to make sure it's on YouTube charity. There's like a bunch of other steps than just that. So it may seem simple, but it is something I'm planning on. I also could, that's a great point. You know, we haven't talked about, you know, we talked about these ideas, but how can we use them as a live stream, which is a really great conversation piece, right? So when I go live, I try to talk about, you know, content creation, YouTube. So what are people looking for, you know, I was doing how to schedule and plan because that's something I get asked all the time and this video will be a forever resource. But one thing I could look up is another thing people ask me is how to understand YouTube analytics, right? So let's go to YouTube analytics. What are people looking for? Analytics, YouTube, YouTube analytics, YouTube analytics explained. This is medium. This could be one I make later in the month. I like that one. YouTube channel analytics problem, probably not the right video, but I'm seeing YouTube analytics explained, YouTube analytics. So this is definitely something I could do. And YouTube analytics explained is one of those I could probably live stream about without any issue because I, I love talking about the analytics. So that's something. I could also maybe go into YouTube titles and see what people are looking for. Going a little there, YouTube titles is low. Maybe it is... Maybe I'm too broad, right? So YouTube ideas could be another one. YouTube channel ideas, best YouTube channel ideas, channel names. Some of these might be too broad, but I could still use them. Like best YouTube channel ideas, YouTube channel name ideas. I could make a short about how to come up with YouTube channel names. YouTube content ideas is what people are searching for. This one's about planning, but I could really deep dive and take audience ideas. That's also where I could use different, you know, pieces. So maybe this is where I'm also thinking about it as what can I do in my schedule, right? Are you struggling with YouTube content ideas? If so, would you like a dedicated live stream about it? I'm wanting to help as many people 
go from idea to finished video. So drop ideas you're thinking of making and let's get content created. Right, so all of a sudden, I'm going back to my calendar, I'm looking at my resources, right? So launch calendar, so we have the 15th, we have a lot of content this week, but maybe on the 20th, because I'm, you know, there's a little bit of a gap here, I'm gonna go ahead for the 20th. I can go ahead and schedule this for June 20th, and then based on the research we did a little bit earlier, I know that 6.45 is probably gonna be it. I'll shake it up and go 6.30. And then I have three pieces of content scheduled and I still have all the other content I plan to do. So we're really been, you know, diving deep, thinking about different times, how we can keep all these ideas. And again, the main thing, if we do this right, we've gone from knowing what our audience needs to engaging them in different ways. And this has all been done in an hour. If you are struggling, and I know this is a conversation I've had with a lot of creators, they're like, I just don't have the time. You'd be surprised. And this is a this is actually a hack I learned from a TikTok creator who said that if you ever can't get yourself to do something, it is better to spend 15 minutes doing a task than zero minutes. Because the truth of the matter is, time is going to pass you by whether you're doing the thing you want to do or not. So you might as well do it. And if I have you working for 15 minutes instead of zero, we've won. So set a timer for 15 minutes and then set a task. Let it be your keyword research. If you are in keyword research, a lot of times it becomes a game against the clock. Like, ah, oh, I want to get so much done. And you're looking over and you're having fun and you're having this conversation and you're, you're challenging yourself. And guess what? Sometimes when 15 minutes hits, you're like, ah, I don't want to do anymore. But a lot of times what I find personally, when that 15 minutes hits, I'm in my flow state. I want to keep going. I'm loving what we're talking about. So I, I cancel it and I keep going. That is a really great piece of actionable advice. You'd be surprised how much you can get done. The beauty, and I don't know if I said this earlier, is that this research tab from YouTube is also available on your mobile device. If you're out about, if you're on an Uber, if you are on a plane, if you have five minutes or you don't have anything else to do, this is something you can do. It is so easy. And that's why I love YouTube's feature. It's free. Again, I know that some people don't have access to your viewer search. You might be a little too net new, but you can still do research. You can still have a lot of fun with it. I see we have used our live stream as a way to get my husband to do content. Now it only takes me a half an hour and I have 30 shorts and can edit into long form video from one live stream. Absolutely. And with the YouTube remix feature, you can make so many live streams from it. One of the best hacks to create YouTube shorts is to go live. Because from a live stream where you are filming for one hour, you can easily remix up to 30 shorts if you do it well. And they can be engaging and interesting for your audience. So if you're looking to learn how to make content and you're just getting started on YouTube, use live streams and then create shorts from that. That right there was a soundbite for myself to create a short from this live stream, taking what you just said and going the next level. And with that, that is great. Right. And that's just another thing that you can do. And I love that. There's a great piece of advice when it comes to planning and scheduling is that you can create snippets from TED Talks Tech. I've been enjoying the lives. You're doing the people's work. And I fully agree with that. Magic Flying Potato, great to see you. Great to meet you at Vid Summit. Starting to try and get more content recorded and scheduling out one to two weeks. Now, one thing I don't know if I've talked about. And this is one of those things that's super easy and it, it's simple, but it's not always, again, just because something simple doesn't mean that you automatically think of it there. I, a lot of times creators and I'm guilty of it too. We reinvent the wheel when the wheel is right there. Uh, instead of going to Harbor Freight and buying me a wheel, I decide to make it myself every time. So I always say do better than me because I've learned a lot of YouTube the hard way. You shouldn't have to. That's why I'm here to help you not batch record set a day set an hour, two hours, whatever it needs. If it's doing a live stream for two hours and that's how you're batch recording, that's fine. If it is, you just take two, an hour of your day, 15 minutes, you use that 15 minutes I told you and you just make shorts for that 15 minutes. The beauty of shorts, you can save them later. And a lot of people don't know this. You can save them as a draft or you can use your phone and edit them later. Just get creating content. 
just do it if I can get you to do anything else. And I said it earlier, time is going to move by whether you are or not creating content. So I'd rather it move by with you creating content than passing you by either way because that's how the world works. So there's so much we can do. For me, I've been filming about three videos. And I, what I'll do is I'll say Monday, I'm only filming, talking to the camera. That's it. And I'm doing it for three videos. I've set an hour of my time aside to just film three videos. They're just talking to the camera. I have my bullet points or my script, depending on what the video is. And I just go and make it and get it done. Then on Wednesday, I do the voiceover. Or maybe on Wednesday, I edit just the A roll. Get that done. Get it out of the way. Then I do my B roll on Thursday and my voiceover on Friday. And, I'm and that's for three videos. So instead of me just focusing all that effort on one piece of content, I'm able to divvy it up and give myself the ability to be kind. I see creators who do it all so chronologically. And I did it that way for six years before I'm like, what am I doing? And guess what? That helped me so much. So you don't have to be like me. Be better than me. If I can, you can too. <sighs> Just I just did four Amazon influencer videos in 30 minutes, one setup, four product reviews. Exactly. And it's amazing how much you can do with just that time. We have 45 shorts in draft right now. The issue is scheduling it all out. And with that, if you have too much content, which is another double-edged sword, from there, I would take a calendar. I would go for YouTube shorts specifically. I would go maybe, you can either go like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or you can do, you know, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, you pick your schedule and look at what your viewers are searching for. Go by focus on the ones that are high first, then medium, then low, get them out, get them scheduled. Those three days a week, give you time, give you, give each short room to breathe. And it lets you create consistently because you have so much. Again, you don't have to publish them all right away, but just have that calendar. And when you start looking at it and my, my favorite thing I have about my notion is that when I have a video done, I go here, I hit publish, it goes away, and that endorphin hit for me, as I show you here on my calendar, when I go to status and I hit publish and I see that go green and go away, that endorphin hit hits just right for my soul. So that's what I would do if I had too many videos. Understand, Skatha, but thank you so much for being here. Or is it Skatha? Not sure. But that's what I would do if I had 45 shorts in the pipeline. I would prioritize what is being searched, high, medium, and low. Understand that when you're posting three a week, three over four weeks gives you 12 shorts, 12 divided by 45. That gives you room to create new shorts within that time, but always have a constant flow. If one is you feel is a little more important than the other, you can put prioritize, move the other one back. You're in full control, and that just becomes so much more helpful for you as a creator. And that's something that, again, I'm actually, I have scheduled for Sunday, just an hour where I'm going to be looking at ideas that I have. And that's why I have a video as ideas tab too, is just to create shorts from them. Like how I got verified, I actually did early. So guess what? Let's go ahead. Published. It's out of here. That is the best feeling. And again, in case you didn't see it, I'll control Z and make myself show again. We're going to hit published out of here. Oh, that endorphin hit, man, it, it, it hits just right. <laughs> it is the right thing. We're doing three a day. So there's something wrong with three a day. I will keep in mind that YouTube does say, even for shorts, give them time to breathe. Maybe experiment with two a day. Just see what happens. I know shorts is a lot different than the standard algorithm and things like that. So just experiment, see what works best for your channel and what's best for your audience. I know for shorts, the swipe away rate and the average percentage view is super important. So if you're noticing that some shorts, if you post too many a day that that is affecting any of those things, just be careful. I know shorts are new and I know that it's changing week after week. YouTube constantly changes and evolves. That's just the nature of the beast. Just again, see what works best for you. But I would say that's something that's super easy to do. 30 day reviews. Hello all, man, I barely know what video will be a day before it. <laughs> and again, that's if you have video ideas. If you know you have dedicated days to film, 
because I have so many ideas that I have saved and scheduled in my save tab, even if I don't know what I'm going to film, I have options to pick from, like what would make me the most excited to do. How to make money online might be one I could do. I used the Sony camera earlier, how to grow a YouTube channel. All of these are things I'm super passionate about, like teleprompter I could talk about. And even from just the teleprompter, right? I could go back. We're going to go back from the beginning. So these are all ideas I have. Go from teleprompter here. We're going to go into chat GPT. Again, we're only using this for idea creation. So I could say write 20 YouTube video title ideas on how to use a teleprompter for content creation. And from here, you know, these are all things, right? Mastering of the teleprompter, tips and tricks for seamless content creation, overcoming teleprompter challenges. Like some of these are really good. Teleprompter tips from the pros. Couldn't make that because I don't believe I'm a pro. Should you use a teleprompter? Could be one I can make because I don't see that here, but that's something just thinking about it. But again, these are things my audience is searching for. I haven't necessarily talked about a teleprompter at all, but if my audience is interested in it, shoot, let's talk about it. I've used a teleprompter for scripted videos. I've used stuff off the top of my head. You can use a teleprompter for your live streams to see yourself so that you're not constantly doing the, I see a lot of creators do. I just know I'm in center frame. I don't really need to look to the side. So I just tend to look here, but I've also trained myself not to do that. So that's something there. ChatGPT is great for video ideas. Yes, it is. But again, as a creator, that's an idea I came up with not seeing it here. A great video could be, should you use a teleprompter? We know there's interest in the teleprompters, but you know, let's search. Should you use a teleprompter? Now we may not get good results because it's a little more specific, but I could do teleprompter. Should you even use it? And again, that's me knowing that, right? And then we went, this is another thing we did earlier. We talked about, you know, we have multiple ideas we could do. How do you decide? We're in the YouTube search. We're looking worldwide. We can type in teleprompter for YouTube, right? And so, you know, looking here, teleprompter for YouTube is the lowest searched. But if we just go teleprompter in general, maybe it's a little bit better. It's actually better than my Sony cameras one. So this is for YouTube worldwide, and it actually can rival, you know, how to stream on YouTube. And again, this is another thing where I talked about you can use a teleprompter for live streaming. I could even subtly mention in my how to stream on YouTube that you can use a teleprompter. You can use Sony camera, and all of a sudden, all three of these ideas can intermingle, and they're connected to one another. And uh, I hope you guys are getting as excited as I do, because God, I love talking about this. I love how we had one idea from what our audience wanted to know. And we have a way to interconnect these different ideas. And heck, teleprompter, screw it. I'm making another community post, because why not? Let's go for it. What are your thoughts on teleprompters? Do you use them? Do you think it's cheating? Let me know. Yes, I use a teleprompter. No, I just come up with it on the top of my head. For Chantel, sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. I'd like to, but just haven't. Other will comment. <laughs> So again, we're going to go back to my Notion, take a look at my calendar. So again, I've got a little bit of a space on the 29th. Nothing is happening, 29th of June. So for the 29th of June, we are going to schedule this post. Going to go 6.15 because we know that 7 is really a good time, but this will be there throughout the day. And boom, we just by doing this live, we have scheduled content. We are asking questions. We're involving our audience. And again, I can still make all of these videos. So we've gone from one idea to interchange and inter, intertwine it to multiple ideas. So from those three ideas, I can leave hints to the others. And guess what? 
when I'm doing the end screen. I'm like, hey, and if you wanted to learn more, because I mentioned Sony cameras in this video, check out that card on screen. Or if you want to watch a video all about Sony cameras and how I use them to go live, click that card or watch, click that video on the end screen. Again, thinking about how we can build content bridges within our own content. I see the chat is still moving. I read like a first grader when I read filter. <laughs> hey, you know, I am still, heck, I'm still learning how to just deliver normal videos, right? But I will say this, that anything worth doing, it's the fundamentals and it takes time. I have used a teleprompter for some videos. I've used just off the top of my head for others. I see no real difference in my average view duration. It tends to be pretty close. I will say that I sometimes feel better on the top of my head, but sometimes I wish I used a teleprompter just to be a little more precise. So for me, I've been doing this for since 2015. I've been on camera with a, you know, doing it. So almost eight years where I've been on camera, but I've been doing YouTube since 2008 where it was just my voice. So teleprompters can be helpful, but again, do what makes you feel comfortable. I see from Monique, I love my teleprompter. Hey, I, sometimes I wish I had it. Sometimes I don't. You, Everyone has their own thing. I usually wing it. Hey, <laughs> again, sometimes I do too. If I'm doing YouTube shorts, I am not using a teleprompter. I'm just speaking from the heart. When I get a dedicated camera, I'll get a teleprompter, but I don't want to do that. All the setup would just be too much. And that's a good point too, because that stopped me from getting a teleprompter for a long time. It there are ways, and in fact, da, 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 da. we're doing teleprompter show and tell. If you don't know, there, this is my DesiView teleprompter. I like it quite a bit. All it uses is another way you can use an old phone, and it connects to your camera using a ring that you put around the camera, and it just, in fact, the camera I'm on now has a ring for it. If I don't mess this up trying to show this. Can you tell that I was definitely ready to do this demonstration? But all of a sudden, minus my camera shaking and moving from the direction it was, uh, yeah, I still have my teleprompter on it. Now, I did accidentally lose the focus, and it did cause my camera to go down because I wasn't expecting to do it live. But the beauty of it is it's right there, minus the fact that I moved the camera a bit. <laughs> you can see that once it's on, it's on. And I can put a second phone. I have multiple separate phones. I'm a hoarder of my old phones because I use them for content. Uh, and I use them for different angles. And I already bought them. Might as well keep them. Because I use them until the wheels fall off. And once the wheels are off, they're mine. <laughs> you don't have to be like me on that. So, yeah, that's just the way I use my teleprompter. And guess what? Like that, it's off. I just have to reset my camera. But that's a... That's an Andrew problem for a sec. One, pardon me. Putting it back on my other camera. But you see, that's one of the things I didn't know existed when I first started using teleprompters. And boom, like that, we are set back up, kind of. I got to lift it a bit because the weight of the teleprompter and me not getting it on perfect. One second. I'm still here. Don't worry, folks. Someone's joining. They're like, what the heck? What am I watching? If you're watching, you're watching me fix my camera. The most exciting thing. And I'm fixing my focus too. Look at that. And boom, we're back. <laughs> but hopefully that just shows how easy some teleprompters can be. I made the mistake and I didn't know about, they're called lens teleprompters. They're the old school ones or any of separate stand. Those, that's the first one I bought. I hated it because I wouldn't use my camera for anything else because it was such a pain to move. So the lens ones were very useful for me. I see. I speak like a first grader when recording in general. Been called out many times for that. I pronounce things. Now I just make fun of myself when I do. That's also a good way to do it, too. I only have to put mine on my desk, take my camera off the ring light mount, record four to five long form, and put it away when finished. Also, another way to do it. I like mine just because of how easy it is, as I showed you. I'm also going to zoom in. I got enough headroom to drive a Jeep through. That is a very specific phrase, but, you know. What if you're privy to 
a mystery. I don't know. That's why I love my prompter. I script half a dozen videos, record, then it's all about editing on the weekend. And again, you're going to know, and I'm glad we're having this conversation on how to record in bulk and in batch. So that is another thing. Again, we're coming up with ideas from what my audience looked up. But please, if you're watching live, go to that tab. Let's go to, we'll get there together. We're going to start from the very beginning, a very good place to start. We're going to go click on customize channel on your channel homepage. I want you to go to analytics and then click on the research tab here. If you are on mobile, you can do it on your phone. And then this is where we are going for this. Thank you, Scatha, for joining. I thought it would streamline the process. I just ended up with a ton of blooper shorts. Fair enough. Again, we're all learning. We're all getting better one video at a time, ideally. So if you have an idea that you want to do research together on, let me know. But again, we've come up with a lot of content, a lot of different things that we can schedule for later. We scheduled, my June is full. My, my community post is going to be do, doing pretty well. So I'm excited for that. And we were able to do that in the content. I think we have TED Talks Tech. What if you're privy to salacious details to an upcoming event that will get people riled up? What proximity to the event do you schedule your video before or after the stream day? So if you're privy to salacious details to an upcoming event, I would say your safety should be a top priority. You never know who is out there. Unfortunately, there have already been some precedented events where a YouTuber was shot when she was performing. Rest in peace, Christina Grimmies. So I would say your safety should be your top priority. You never know who is out there. And I always say that to creators because as much fun as this can be, I never want anything bad to happen to you. For example, when I go to VidCon, I will share it out on Twitter and I will share it out, but I always make sure I'm at the event. I always make sure that I know the event is secure. For example, VidCon, there's securities, there's bag limits. There are so much that they do to hopefully keep us safe. I always say your safety should be your top priority. Maybe announce you're going to the event, but never give them specifics on where you're going to be. And if you do post, maybe delay it by 15 minutes or once you're gone. I always say your safety is super important. Sorry that got a little, little serious, but hopefully you understand. So from Garage Hobbyist, alternate income streams for small creators. Is this something you want me to look up? Because we definitely can. I'm going to start with income streams, which is really the, the root. Multiple streams of income, passive income streams, streams of income. So what I would do here is multiple streams of income, and then I would do for small creators, because in it, I could say these are... I'm going to show you how to make multiple streams of income. A lot of these are alternatives to the nine to five job that we all know so well. And again, I kept the idea of alternative income streams while focusing on something with medium results. So giving the audience what they're looking for while putting my spin on it, which is what we try to do on the creator. Uh, if you know months ahead, can you schedule weeks prior? Yeah, I, I would say if it is details that aren't public, what I tend to do is ask when will it be public uh, a lot of times it's an embargo or if you're a history buff they called it the oh grab me which is the embargo backwards so i would just always ask it's better to ask and be told no or this is when than not ask and you're blacklisted and i've seen that happen too that was me at first i learned to read my script a few times before recording my shortest recording time for a 10 minute video is 15 minutes that's impressive monique Whew. Just an idea for a future live stream? Definitely, that's something I could do. I definitely would maybe bring on my friend Roberto Blake because he is really a master and someone I learned from. He, I didn't, Roberto didn't teach me directly, but he more so gave me the confidence to try it myself. And if I would have been doing it a lot earlier, I would be a lot richer, let me tell you. I, I, I do well now, but man, be better than me. If you're starting a YouTube channel, if you're watching this, if you made it an hour and 19 minutes in, go ahead and sign up for many affiliate programs as you can that are one, justifiably what you use, and two, make sure to disclose this an affiliate. There's no harm in it. It has become so commonplace to when I started. Back in the day, people used to get mad at YouTubers for making money. Now they celebrate it. So be better than me. <laughs> 
I think a lot of the Discord for, could benefit from the topic. Absolutely. And if you don't know, and thank you to Garage Hobbyist for bringing up the Discord, we have a Discord server, which I have linked in the description. It is a great way that you can learn how to grow and develop as a creator. And it's one of the things I'm most proud of. Garage is very active in the Discord. He's actually a top contributor who is going to get a coffee mug soon. Pending shipping. The Artist Haven says, I'm going to be doing a slight pivot on my channel from an artist's home to an artist on the road. I bought a motor home and I'm making it my mobile studio, struggling with content grouping. Sure. I mean, you're basically doing both van life and art. And I think that that is interesting. I think the there are two different audiences, truly. What I would do is maybe have a new channel, maybe a short channel where you can really focus on that van life. And if you get confident, make. I mean, I started as a gaming channel. And as I got more confident on camera, my gaming channel kind of struggled a bit because I was loving one channel more than the other. And that that's on me as a creator. I built a really good community there. But the truth is that channel outgrew the purpose I built it for. And that's okay. That is a completely fine reason to switch from one channel to the other. I know you're passionate about both, but this is a great time to experiment with bro. That's what I'd say. I'm, wait I'm waiting by the mailbox right now. Uh, according to them, it's going to be more like the 20th to the 30th, so I wouldn't be waiting near the mailbox. <laughs> but, you know, hopefully. And Travel Around Susie, another top contributor from our Discord. Yours is coming soon. Shipping is not our friends, but you know what is our friends? Content planning and content strategy. And we have gone through different ways that you can schedule using ChatGPT, using Notion, using Adobe Express, using the tools that are built there to build a content schedule. Again, we started with what our audience is searching for. Once we knew what they were searching for, we brought it into ChatGPT to come up with ideas by prompting. And then once we prompted them, we could either make a short live stream or all three. That's the real hack. Then once we were confident with the ideas, we brought them into Notion where we have lots of stuff in our production pipeline with dates of when we're going to publish, what type of content. And then that leads us to the end part, which was no matter what, whether you're creating content right now or not, time is going to move forward. So move forward with time, build a schedule, find days to film and film. And if I can leave you with anything is remember that if I can, you can too. And you can empower others in your audience to do the same thing. Thank you all so much for the most valuable resource you have, your time, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.